According to a study by the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, the Austin Metro saw an unusually high level of mass layoffs last year, especially compared to larger areas like Houston and Dallas. Just this week, the employment company Indeed, co-headquartered in Austin, announced a second round of layoffs. And you may remember last month, Tesla let go nearly 2,700 of its Austin employees. Austin attorney Paul Freener is here to offer some insight into all of this. Thanks for being with us. We Happy to be here. It. Thank yeah. you. So you are a labor and employment lawyer. You specialize in that field. Mm -hmm. I want to start off by asking you about any possible rules surrounding how employees are notified about being laid off. And the reason that I ask is because we hear these horror stories where people say, I was blindsided. Uh, I remember a Tesla employee said that she got an email early on Monday morning basically saying don't come in today. So while that may uh, be considered insensitive, uh, is it against the law? Is it breaking any rules? It depends on how they receive notice about um, the layoff that's occurring. And you know, you have to really step back from uh, the, the notice that you may receive and determine first, is this an actual layoff? A lot of people that get laid off um, that are being laid off under certain terms, they're looking at how much notice did they get, um, what was in the notice that they received, but they're also having to ask when they received that notice, um, was there a requirement under federal law that they had to be told in advance that they were being laid off. As you saw with Indeed, uh, the Indeed Corporation, the, the notice that the CEO put out, that information, while it's public, it was not presented to the Texas Workforce, Workforce Commission, the, the state entity that has to be notified about massive layoffs. And I think that that kind of draws out the question of why, because um, part of the federal statute requires that if you are going to comply with the um, the Federal Warren Act, that's your, your Workers Adjustment and Retraining Act that requires notice, people have to be told um, in advance that if, if they're going to lose their jobs, you know, what kind of steps can they take in advance to, to ease that transition. And nothing right now is being seen on the Texas Workforce Commission website about that official notice other than what the CEO put out. Mm. Yeah. So in some cases it may not meet that threshold to be considered a mass layoff. But I do want to ask if mm -hmm. a company does reach that, that, those, uh, that threshold, they're saying right. we are going to have mass layoffs. Mm -hmm. What are some of the conditions and things that might lead a company to say this is the move we're going to take? It depends on the employment market. Of course, Texas is, uh, Austin is very big with the tech industry. Indeed is a big tech company. Um, while it is also charged with helping people find jobs and that is kind of questionable about if they're having trouble with uh, you know, hiring their own employees and keeping their own employees, what does that mean for the rest of us? Um, but as a tech company, you know, you're seeing sort of a trend right now in Austin and we're hoping it's not gonna get worse, but um, just looking at the Texas Workforce Commission's data right now for 2024, just in the last week, there are other tech companies that are also experiencing this layoff. Um, a Microsoft company called Arcane, uh, Arcane LLC, I believe, and another streaming service um, called uh, Atmosphere Rarified Incorporate also laid off people, about 100 people. And so you add that with the, the previous month where um, Indeed laid off other people and then Tesla as well as laying off um, additional employees in, in the thousands. So um, you have to kind of wonder wh where's the market going right now and, and how bad have things been that people are starting to see this particular area of the industry be affected. If you're unfortunate enough to be one of those employees who is mm -hmm. laid off, what sorts of rights do you have? So the big uh, area that people want to look at is what type of notice do they receive under the Federal Warren Act. Um, that's a, a really popular uh, statute that people will look to to first determine uh, if there was any violations. And it's important for people to understand what the Warren Act is because it'll determine what type of uh, benefits and, and pay coverage that they'll have for the next 60 days. If people are, if companies and employers comply with the Warren Act, they'll have given at least 60 days notice uh, in advance of any layoffs and any kind of mass uh, terminations that will occur for employees. And those employees will be able to kind of project how they're going to transition into new jobs or seek training through the Texas Workforce Commission for those new jobs. But they're insured those benefits, they're insured that pay for the next two months. What you saw with Tesla um, and why lawsuits were filed was because uh, 
uh, Elon Musk had decided to just pay out employees those the the, the minimum amount of, of benefits and, and pay that those employees were required to get under the WARN Act. So essentially, you're looking at two months of pay, two months of benefits. But if an employer decides to say, we're just going to give you the money now and let you go, it, it's not necessarily the worst thing because now you don't have to show up for your job. You get two months or more of benefits and pay then, uh, right then and there, and then you can go in and choose to spend your time how you need to with that money. And so it doesn't let employers off of the responsibility to give advance notice, so there is still a legal cause of action that could occur, but it reduces the, the damages. If you were to file a lawsuit and, and you're going into a judge's courtroom to, to ask for a certain amount of back pay, a certain amount of back benefits, the employer is going to say, we've already given this amount to them and we shouldn't be liable for that. Mm -hmm. Talk a little more, we know you're talking about these laws that are in mm -hmm. place to um, help these employees get severance, get health benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, what else should people know, maybe if they are not covered by the WARN Act, or, or what are some things people should know when they're seeking out that severance or, or benefits after the fact? I think they first want to have a conversation with their employer. Um, whether or not you're contractually obligated to get any type of severance pay or any ongoing health benefits, it doesn't hurt to ask. They're, you know, We're in an at-will state. so. Uh, everyone has that bit of uncertainty about what their job is going to provide them if they were in this situation. And so if they're not in uh, some type of contractual obligation that requires them to get a certain amount of benefits or pay um, if they are being terminated in, in, you know, in breaching that contract or, or ending that contract, they should just have the conversation. And one of the most important things in that transition is asking for a reference letter. You want to be able to get a, a good reference from your employer to be able to you know, provide to your next potential employer that you did your job well and that this is just a part of a uh, cost of doing business and you're moving on to a, a new, new position. Good advice. Mm -hmm. Labor lawyer Paul Freener, thank you for coming in today. We appreciate your time. Thank you. for taking.